as we get stuck into semi-final number one here. Yeah, Giggs, it's been an exciting morning. We've got that southerly wind coming up, making things a little bit bumpy, but the good news is the swell is still around. The tide has dropped out, and we have seen some pretty big scores through the morning going into semi-final number one. Jack Freestone has been in great form and, of course, a finalist last year at this event. Well, maybe so. Jack's comparing it to a very quickly run Oi Rio Pro. I mean, the boys landed in Brazil, and before you knew it, the event was over. Let's have a look here at Jorgen Cousine. Goes to the air. Little error there early on from Jorgen. You cannot afford to do that against Jack Freestone. And if you want to go to the air... The good way that came through, that was, that was a pretty poor wave. So you're kind of confident when the wave's not, not too good. But sometimes, most of the time, guys will get the scores and make it a dramatic finish. So um, you, you kind of hold it on and, and wait to see what happens. All right, a very happy Wade Carmichael. He's going to try and do better than our national cricket team did last night against the locals. We're going to see him in the semi-finals a little bit later today. As we see this replay of the 5.0 from Jack Freestone, really cool, calm and collected as he just works it down the line. Pretty much a carbon copy of one of his waves this morning as he just drives that beautiful vertical turn over the section into the carve. And doing well. Just to get a little bit of expression on the... See Luke Thompson, the youngster from uh, Durban, coming up in the expression section later. Well, here goes Freestone, establishing wave number two of the opening semi-final. Nice little jam here. The Australian just quick back to work. I've often felt that Jack Freestone really is kind of cruisy at the best of times. Yeah, love the first turn. You see that little drop knee off the top of the turn, just getting the power extension, does it again, and flows straight into the closeout manoeuvre. And uh, the judges are rewarding that with a 6-3-3. Let's have a look at what Jorgen brought for us. Well, he took off on this one, really eyes way down the line as he looks for somewhere to project. Goes up for a little float over the top. It's not going to get much score off of that one. And then goes for the big closeout hack. And I think he may have underestimated the outgoing tide. And I'll talk more about that as we just watch Jack Freestone here using priority. So this, Jack likes the look of this one. Lovely end section hit there. Just sort of cat-like holds onto it. He's almost like a jaguar. He's like a panther. He'll stake place down the road, but I'm pretty sure that him and Alana and their kid are all vegetarians or vegans. So he's been on a really healthy diet. That was a healthy vertical hit there, just going absolutely 12 o'clock and I love this turn here goes about 11 on that but he really got that little fin release on the well Cousinet on those Darren Handley shapes he has a couple of them here I know one is a 5.11 I've got a feeling he's pulled out the 6.1 so maybe on a little bit more rail length is Cousinet and I think it's catching him that's what I'm seeing here in the lineup this morning in absolutely phenomenal surfing I love how vertical he gets on his front side but here goes the Frenchman on the reply let's see what uh, Jorgen can bring to us Looks like he's on his 6-1. Extends it over that white water. Here's a section to slam into. Nice little whipping there. And a little bit of explanation. Maybe even a little grunt. I was surfing how that goes. But uh, watch him as he takes off on this one. I think you're right. He is on the slightly longer board. Comes off the bottom. He's got a great bottom turn, this guy. Goes into the little hook. And then this wave kind of goes a little wonky on him. So he works it down the line. Another little floater. We haven't seen too many scores going on in the float. This is a great turn there. He really drops that back arm. Pulls the tail around. Very flexible in the hips and knees. And Well, priority play here. Cousinet must give way to the higher priority of Jack Freestone. Freestone goes, no, I like the look of this. I feel that you could threaten my lead. And Jack Freestone quickly <laughs> posts a fifth ride here in the semifinals. It's a mid-range five. Well, we watched Jorgen there, Giggs. He had to pull strongly out of that one as Jack paddled in. First turn was nice. Just a little big wrap around. It's this turn that will get the points, though. And he really did project right over the section there. Gets a clean little rotation out. And that was some great surfing. Well, you mentioned uh, that Jack uh, was just looking back at the judges there for something. Here he goes just quickly at work again. 0.7. So a block becomes an improvement in numbers. Now he has the opportunity. Jorgen Cousine. Big hammer again. And he's liking that one. So it's game on here inside the final 90 seconds. And where is wow. this heat going to go? Because a slight improvement, it wasn't a big improvement for Jack Freestone, who had to play a block, but then handed the priority to Cousinet. Let's look at the replay here. This was an exciting wave. He was under a lot of pressure. Takes off straight into the bottom turn. Not quite at the bottom of the wave, but he gets a nice little hook off the top over the lip into another massive bottom turn there. And then really laid into that. He had to pull the turn a little short gigs because that lip was bottoming, bottoming out on him. Well, 
I'll go the other way just for the discussion. Waiting on scores here as semi-final number one wraps up now. Did Jorgen Kuzene meet the requirements of a 597 or not? We're hanging on this. We'll answer that for you when we come back from the break and we head into semi-final number two of the Belito Pro.